What is up, you guys? Thank you very much for listening in today. We'll be covering gel electrophoresis. This is a really, really simple technique that we use in biochemistry. My name is Carter, or Karthik, if you want my real name. And I started SciGen.com, which is a method search engine for biology and biochemistry. You should really check it out. If you go onto the website, you can actually do a search for gel electrophoresis and your topic, like phosphoerc, and it'll pop up a whole bunch of methods. We have over a million methods already indexed. So let's just get into it. All right, so in order to first understand electrophoresis, I wanna go through the fundamental theory behind it. If you have an electric field, as we've seen here, one side of your electric field can be considered a cathode, and then the other side can be considered an anode. And in general, the anode is the side that is positive and the cathode is anything that's negative, in which case, if you've got a solution in the middle between these two, then anything that is positively charged will kind of flow in that direction. And anything that's negatively charged will kind of flow in that direction because, well, opposites attract. So what does this mean? This means that if you've got a bunch of stuff in solution and you want to separate it based on charge, you can actually do it very easily by, by applying an electric field around it. And that's really the theory behind electrophoresis. All right, so now we know that a negative charge will go towards the positive end, which is the anode, and then a positive charge will go towards the negative end. So what if that negative charge is actually a part of something like DNA? Well, same thing applies. This DNA will actually migrate towards the anode. And let's say that maybe instead of DNA, you're actually trying to separate out a whole bunch of protein. Protein, of course, when it's in native state, has a very complex shape. And maybe this complex shape has, well, a whole bunch of negative charges on the surface. And overall, that protein is negatively charged. Well, in that case, that protein will also migrate towards this anode. All right, so now we know that even a negative particle such as DNA or protein that has a whole bunch of negative charges on the surface will end up going towards the anode. So what is gel electrophoresis? Well, you take the same principle and now we've got, well, a gel. And this gel, you can load a bunch of samples into these little wells that are inside the gel. And when you apply an electric field, again, the anode is here, the cathode is here, the anode is positively charged, the cathode is negatively charged. And if your sample is negative, it's actually going to migrate downward towards the positive anode. That's gel electrophoresis. Same principle, but now you've added, well, a gel in the middle. And this gel can slow down the different particles based on size, which is also something we'll talk about next. All right, now that we understand that in gel electrophoresis, you can actually add your sample into these wells into a gel and apply an electric field and have that sample go through the gel, let's take a look at the gel itself. You can actually imagine this gel as being kind of a 3D matrix. Think of it like it's actually in 3D and you can actually take a cross section of it, which is shown here in gray. So when you look at the cross-section, you can see that, well, there are some pores that are inside the cross-section. There are some bigger ones, there are some smaller ones here. And what this means is that if you have DNA going through this gel, it might be able to go through these big pores just fine, but then these smaller pores would actually block it. And in gel electrophoresis, what happens is this same technique gets applied all the way throughout the gel. So what you end up with is something where you've got a gel and then you'll have some DNA, which was really, really big, that kind of stays at the top. The gel ret retards it a lot. And then some of that DNA is really small and it ends up going towards the bottom. And then some of the DNA may not be super big or super small, so maybe you'll kind of get a banding pattern, kind of like that. So again, this is big, this is small, 
and then medium. And this process is called sieving. And well, now that we know what gel electrophoresis is like, you can imagine that you run a gel, you load a bunch of samples into those wells on the top, you apply an electric field, and then the samples go through. But if it's DNA, for instance, inside those samples, you can't really see it. DNA doesn't have any color to it. So really your gel kind of looks like this thing on the left, which is, it's got a bunch of DNA inside it. In theory, that DNA has been separated and there are some DNA fragments that are kind of at the top of the gel. There's some DNA fragments at the bottom of the gel, but you cannot see it. So our next step is to stain it. And in general, you use some kind of a stain for the sample that you use. In this case for DNA, we would use something like ethidium bromide which would then allow you to visualize the sample inside the gel. And you might end up with these kind of banding patterns. So next we'll look at what do these actually mean? So what do those banding patterns actually mean? Initially, we had put a whole bunch of DNA into these wells at the top and that DNA had run through and it started giving banding patterns like these ones that we see here. Like I said before, anything that's big will kind of stay at the top and anything that's small will go towards the bottom. It will travel a lot further in the gels because, well, the gels had pores. Remember all this? So in order to use gel acresis, you need to load something we call a ladder. A ladder is a predefined set of DNA fragments or other things that we know the size of. And when you load a ladder into a well, that ladder will go along with your sample in its lane. And eventually the ladder will actually kind of look like this visualization on the left. So all these purples are your ladder bands. So you can actually compare and perhaps you can say this ladder here was 100,000 base pairs. And that also tells you, well, this DNA fragment, which kind of showed up at the same spot as a 100,000 base pair ladder, should also likely be about 100,000 base pairs. This is how you can use gel electrophoresis to separate things by size and then analyze the size of those fragments, which is really useful downstream. Perhaps you're trying to make a plasmid and you know that the plasmid needs to have a certain size. And if it doesn't have that certain size, maybe the plasmid ends up being too small and that's the wrong thing. But the ones that are the correct size, maybe they're larger, who knows? That totally depends on the experiment. But in theory, you could use gel electrophoresis to separate all the DNA that you have in your sample, find the stuff that's the right size that you want, and you can actually then just cut out that band and maybe go sequence it or go use it for something later. That's the power of gel electrophoresis. In the next section, we'll look at how do you actually analyze the molecular weights of your different DNA fragments by comparing them to the latter. Once again, this is your ladder. All right, so now we know that using a ladder, you can actually determine if the size of your DNA fragments are what you expect, and you can analyze the different sizes of all your DNA fragments in all these different wells that you've put inside your gel. In general, you can use software to do this comparison pretty easily. The software will take all of these different ladder lanes and it will kind of make a plot saying, based on the retention time versus your size, this is what you expect. So maybe this top fragment, which is a very, very high retention time, will kind of be here and it's a high size as well. 
And then this bottom one, which is a very low size and a low retention time, meaning it went through all the way, that's at the bottom. Using this, the software will make a graph and then it'll plot all your different samples versus what is available within the ladder. And it'll tell you approximately how large your DNA fragments are. All right, you guys, thank you very much for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. I'll be putting out a whole bunch of new content about gel electrophoresis as well as other biochemistry and biology techniques. And we should connect. Let's chat on LinkedIn. Make sure you put any questions that you have at the bottom. I'd be happy to answer them. And if you're looking for someone who is an expert in polymer chemistry or biocompatible materials, I'm always open to consulting opportunities, tutoring, whatever you'd like. Let's chat. Talk to you later. This is Carter, signing off.